Okay, let's see. When's the next Godzilla video? When's the next Godzilla video? Hey, when are you going to do another Godzilla video? You look like Canadian Dexter. Hmm. When's the next Godzilla video? When's the next Godzilla video? Oh, here we go. Hey, Brandon, big fan of your videos. Keep up the good work. That said, if you don't review another Godzilla movie soon, I'm going to break into your home, cut your balls off with a rusty pair of garden shears, and feed them to your cat right in front of you. P.S. If you think I'm kidding, just look out your kitchen window. Okay, I think I can take a hint. And besides, there's a new Godzilla movie opening soon, so this seems like the perfect time to do one. So here is another Godzilla- Oh, for fuck's sake. Alright, you know what? I want to keep my balls, so we're just gonna have to fight through these, okay? So to get everybody caught up, I last left off on Godzilla vs. Biollante, which is considered by both fans and critics to be one of the best films in the series. Despite this, however, the movie underperformed at the box office, and as a result, Toho decided that instead of creating entirely new monsters, they'd reuse some of Godzilla's most well-known foes from the past in the hopes of increasing attendance. And so, in 1991, they decided to bring back arguably Godzilla's greatest enemy in Godzilla vs. King Ghidra. It's King Ghidorah. Uh, I mean, King Ghidorah. You gave this terrifying monster the name of Ghidorah. King Ghidorah? Where the monster Ghidra passes, only flaming ruins are left. Ghidra? Alright, well, however you say it, he's probably Godzilla's most well-known enemy. You know, dragon, three heads, two tails. I mean, come on, he is gonna be in the new movie after all. Also, because Godzilla vs. Biollante was overshadowed by Back to the Future Part 2 at the box office, the producers decided to include time travel in the movie, thinking that this would guarantee success. I would say that just because a movie has time travel in it doesn't mean it's guaranteed to make money, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. So the movie begins in the far future year of... Oh hey, it's actually far in the future this time. I thought maybe they'd set it in 1999 just to have it sync up with Destroy All Monsters. Bad news for this submarine. Instead of finding the Titanic, they spot the remains of King Ghidra. It's King Ghidorah. Eh, whatever. The English dubs I grew up on as a kid all called him Ghidra, so I'm calling him Ghidra. Or would you prefer it if I called Godzilla Gojira for the rest of the video? Hmm, I don't know, fellas. I think using a Panasonic 3DO for your effects might have been a bad idea. It's gigantic, and it's got two heads. Originally, it had three. It lost one when it fought Godzilla. You mean King Ghidorah fought Godzilla? Yeah, and in other news, the sky is blue. We then flash back to 1992, where the residents of Tokyo are busy watching a UFO with great concern. I don't blame them. Usually in a Godzilla movie, this means some invading aliens are about to fuck them up. Nobody can explain what's going on. It's not like anything that's happened before. Well, not in this Godzilla continuity anyway. This is our main character, Terasawa, a successful sci-fi writer, and he's so rich he can afford a house full of manga. Hopefully he has hentai common. Enough of him, though. We need to get to an old man rambling about dinosaurs. A long time ago, I saw a real live dinosaur. He's close by. And he watches over all of us. I'm not sure where he hides, but he can see us. Ah, oh, jeez. Grandpa's off his meds and talking about dinosaurs again. The dinosaurs never went extinct. It was just a false flag. They were all crisis dinos, I tell you. Terasawa goes to visit the man who was ranting about the dinosaur and finds out that in World War II, a dinosaur protected his garrison from U.S. soldiers. When our troops were stationed over on Lagos Island, the soldiers in my garrison all saw it. It saved us from the U.S. forces that were attacking our troops in that region. Plus, because we were allied with him, the dinosaur also saved several Nazi troops that were stationed there, but, uh, don't tell anybody about that part, okay? Even though it's not unusual for a dinosaur to be in a Godzilla movie, I think this guy might just be crazy. The Americans were so scared by what they saw, they retreated just as fast as they could. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna slowly back away now, but uh, good luck telling people about the dinosaur, alright? 
Meanwhile, the government keeps tracking the UFO scene earlier, and they even consult Miki Sagusa, the psychic girl introduced in the previous movie, for information. You know, considering the original Godzilla series had a pretty loose continuity and recycled a lot of the same actors but had them playing different characters, it's kinda nice that the Heisei series actually tried to have each movie flow into the next one a little bit. Anyway, a dinosaur expert has some important news for Terasawa. Bones of a plesiosaur just off New Zealand. Professor, this is 1977. Wait a second. Plesiosaur? 1977? Oh shit, I think I know what he found. <laughs> the professor says that this proves the old man's story about seeing a dinosaur in World War II is true, even though plesiosaurs technically weren't dinosaurs. Terasawa theorizes that the dinosaur was bombarded by an atomic bomb and ended up becoming Godzilla and talks to Shindo, a businessman who also saw the dinosaur back in World War II. Ten years after you left Lagos, an H-bomb was tested close by on an island called Bikini, and it's very possible that the radioactivity turned it into Godzilla. Godzilla? And forget the way I pronounce Ghidra, this movie can't even decide how to say Godzilla. I do gotta say, this dinosaur does look a lot more like Godzilla than Minya does. But forget the dinosaur, what's happening with the UFO? Moving closer, we'll check it out. Yes, sir. Ah! Eagle 2, come in. What's happened, Eagle 2? Ah, come on, guys, it's a spaceship in a Godzilla movie. You should have known that was gonna happen. The beings in the spaceship say they want to talk to the Japanese Prime Minister, and given the way they've acted so far, I'm sure they come in peace. And besides, turns out these aliens aren't actually aliens, they're humans from centuries in the future. That's right, this movie managed to avoid the whole invading alien plot in a Godzilla movie by having them not actually be aliens. Sorta. The visitors from the future are called the Futurians, which... Really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense in their own time, now would it? Men of your time would call our ship a time machine, but not us. We call it our mothership. So, the ship is a time machine. Hey! I said we don't call it that! In addition to time travel, the Futurians have also mastered several other forms of technology. Teleportation. Yes, but we don't call it that. We don't like calling things what they actually are in the future. The Futurians explain that they've traveled back in time to prevent Godzilla from destroying Japan in the future. Very shortly, Godzilla will come back to life and wreak havoc on Japan. Your mother country will be uninhabitable and Japan will not exist. So, have you guys considered using your time machine to go back and strangle Hitler as a baby or deliver a cure for AIDS before it breaks out? No? Okay, well, I guess saving Japan from Godzilla is good too. The Futurians confirm that Godzilla's origin is he was a dinosaur that was mutated by atomic bomb tests shortly after World War II, just like Terasawa thought. Good thing they went with this Godzilla origin and not the one where he's an iguana mutated by the French. They also propose going back in time to World War II and preventing Godzilla from being created in the first place. They're gonna go back to Lagos Island to get the dinosaur. Our history will no longer include Godzilla. No, don't do that! Godzilla movies are my channel's bread and butter! The Futurians also decide to take Terasawa, Miki, and the Dinosaur Expert along with them. And if you're wondering how this movie is going to deal with stuff like time paradoxes or plot holes, the answer is... it doesn't. Like, at all. The time travel stuff in this movie has more holes in it than a Swiss cheese factory, so it's best to just kind of roll with it. Despite all their cool stuff, I see chair technology really takes a nosedive in the future. But they do have some other impressive things to show off. Going with you will be both Miss Emmy and our android model M11. You mean, this guy's a robot? They're a little confused because in Japan, robots are usually both sexier and creepier. Of course, M11's not the only weird thing they're bringing along with them. Ah! Ah! Sorry, did they scare you? We call them Dorats. Yeah, these things are one part of the movie I'm not a big fan of. I'll explain a little bit later. They're a new kind of animal. They're created through biotechnology. Are they going to be coming along with us? Yes, they'll be very helpful to us if we ever get lost, because they can always cheer us up. Plus, if we get lost and don't have food, we can just eat them. All right, time to travel through time. <laughs> Okay, either they're back in World War II, or they just ran into a really serious group of reenactors. Oh, and way to stay inconspicuous there, fellas. That looked to me like it was from another planet. Let's just keep it as our secret. You can tell your son about it when he's born. Major Spielberg. 
And hearing his dad's story is how Steven Spielberg was inspired to make 1941. He mainly just paid attention to the World War II stuff. Speaking of World War II, we learned that Shindo was the Japanese commander on the island, and I gotta say, he hasn't aged a day since then. He's younger. Of our yeah, but it's him. Are you sure? Cause to me, he looks the same. How old is this guy, like 130? Anyway, time for M11 to show off what he can really do. Ah, I see in the future they've managed to perfect power walking technology. He's like the six million dollar man, which in the future is only like about 20 bucks is today, but still. The American forces begin their attack, and while Japan may have ended up losing World War II, that's only because there weren't more dinosaurs to help him out. That's a decent suit, but I kind of wish they used the T-Rex from The Last Dinosaur for this part. That way we could have had Richard Boone as one of the soldiers. You ding dong! Jeez, not only did this movie make a Spielberg joke, but it also weirdly predicted him making both Jurassic Park and Saving Private Ryan. And this is kind of making me wish he'd combined him into one movie. Eventually the American ships start firing at the dinosaur, mortally wounding it, which leads to one of the best lines in the whole movie. Take that, you dinosaur. Ah, uh, truly words that will echo throughout the corridors of history. Well, looks like the dinosaur is dead. Or is it? <laughs> Damn, too bad 80s slasher movies weren't around in World War II or else they might not have fallen for this. As a show of gratitude for saving them, the commander gives the dinosaur a samurai sword for an honorable death, but unfortunately its arms are too short to commit seppuku. Okay, now that the Japanese are gone, they can teleport the dinosaur into Hitler's bunker and help end the war. Win-win. Before they go back, though, they notice the Dorats have been left behind on the island, and in the present day, they find out that the nuclear explosion that turned the dinosaur into Godzilla has instead turned the Dorats into King Ghidra. And, yeah, Ghidra's new origin is one of the biggest problems I have with this movie. In the original Godzilla series, Ghidra was from outer space, and while you didn't know exactly what his origins were, you did know that he was an incredibly powerful monster capable of destroying planets, and even Godzilla usually had to team up with some other monsters in order to defeat him. And in this movie, he's... these things. Cute fuzzy pets that look like they should be sitting on a toy shelf next to a Furby. I don't know, it just seems like a disappointing origin for Godzilla's greatest enemy. It's like learning Godzilla was originally Baby Bop. So, yeah, turns out the Futurians are actually evil and are controlling Ghidra to have him destroy Japan. But why? Why would these people want to create King Ghidorah? Well, come on, Godzilla's got to fight somebody in this movie. See, this is why you never trust aliens in a Godzilla movie, even if the aliens are really just people from the future. However, Emi, the Japanese Futurian, doesn't like that Ghidra's destroying Japan and goes to tell Terasawa. I don't know what the hell she thought Ghidra was gonna do, but whatever. Anyway, Emi says that in the future, Japan becomes the world's biggest superpower, and they traveled back in time to destroy Japan to prevent that from happening. We made up the story about Godzilla. He never does destroy Japan. Later on, Japan will become even stronger, the richest nation of the 21st century. Oh, the early 90s, when everybody thought Japan was going to take over the world. Thankfully, nowadays we know better, and it's actually China that's going to do that. Or... India? I don't know, one of them. But uh-oh, looks like M11 followed them after putting on his Miami Vice cosplay. Hydra continues to destroy Japan, and since there's no Godzilla, how the hell are they going to stop him? That dinosaur is buried under the ocean. Do you think we could... Somehow change it into Godzilla? Uh, considering it's at the bottom of the ocean, I think you just end up with a dead dinosaur that also happens to be radioactive. Plus, how exactly are they going to do that? We have a nuclear submarine with powerful nuclear missiles. We've always kept this totally secret. Yeah, Japan may say they're against nukes, but somebody's got to ensure they have a steady supply of giant monsters for their movies. What gives us the right to do something like that? Who are we to create another Godzilla? I don't know, Toho? Miki, however, says she already feels Godzilla's presence because, hey, I guess they had to use her psychic powers somehow in this movie. And wait a second, wasn't M11 spying on Emmy? Huh? It's M11! Hey, there he is. However, despite his outfit, M11 sadly wasn't programmed to be as cool as Don Johnson. Oh, and did I mention this movie came out the same year as Terminator 2? What the 
hell's he doing now? He's gonna regret this, I'll show him. Dude, he's lifting your car. I don't think you're gonna kick his ass, all right? The Futurians are so upset at Emmy's betrayal, they allow her to reprogram M11 so he helps her? So, how are you? Good. My boss. You know, for people from a technologically advanced time centuries from now, the Futurians are kinda dumb. So, what about the sub sent to create Godzilla? What's this? What's going on? SOS! We're in trouble! Wow, that worked out even better than they thought. Godzilla was already there. Oh, and if you're wondering why Godzilla was already there, the English dub kind of glosses over this, but it turns out that by moving the dinosaur away from the island, all they did was create the Godzilla from Godzilla 1985, which was a different Godzilla from the original Godzilla. So in this case, the original dinosaur was a different Godzilla from the original Godzilla because... Timey, wimey, wibbly, wobbly stuff. Not only that, but Godzilla's gotten a bit of a makeover since last time. It's got much bigger. Godzilla was made with modern nuclear weapons this time. Besides that, it's more powerful because it's absorbed all of the sub's energy. Yeah, I know. That's how science works. Duh. It's a good thing Godzilla's back, since even Japan's most modern military stock footage has no effect on King Ghidra. He's putting the end on us! Trying to swing around behind him! You know, when Kenny Loggins sang about the Danger Zone, I don't think this is what he meant. Jeez, Godzilla better get there quick. So it happened. Godzilla was created again. Unlike our age, where there's no nuclear energy, this generation has nuclear power everywhere. It really didn't matter just what location we teleported the dinosaur to. The second birth of Godzilla was an unavoidable event. Um, you could have just transported him to the future where there's no nuclear energy and then he wouldn't be able to stop you in the past. Just a suggestion. Damn, if only they had some sort of time machine so they could go back and fix their mistake. Ah well, for now I guess they'll just have to attack Godzilla with King Ghidra. It's King Ghidorah. Hey, fuck you, Miki. Nice that we're finally getting a fight between these two, but I can't help but feel Mothra and Rodan should also be here. Actually, I'll bet Godzilla feels that way too since he starts losing the fight. Damn, even his nuclear steroid injection from the sub earlier wasn't enough. Thankfully, our heroes destroy the computer the Futurians are using to control him, and it turns out unless someone's telling him what to do, this version of Ghidra can't fight for shit. Well, I think I know what I gotta do here. Well, somebody stop the damn match! Enough's enough! Looks like that's it for the Futurians, although they don't seem to think so. Do you think that means you've won? It doesn't matter. Godzilla's going to destroy the country of Japan himself. Your country has no future now. Our job here was a success. Uh, considering you ended up creating Godzilla instead of erasing him from history, I don't know there was a way you could have been less successful. However, the Futurians have a failsafe that'll send him back to the future 20 minutes after it's activated, which I'm sure won't give our heroes enough time to defeat them. Oh wait, it does. I forgot these future people are idiots. Anyway, how's Godzilla doing against Ghidra? Hmm. Alright, I'll do it. So Ghidra is destroyed, the Futurians are killed, and the day is saved. Okay, so that means everything's fine now, right? There's a 91% chance that Godzilla will attack Tokyo. 91? You're in a Godzilla movie, I think there's a 100% chance he's gonna do that. So yeah, no sooner does Godzilla get rid of Ghidra when suddenly he just starts destroying Japan. I actually really like this plot twist. A lot of Godzilla movies use him as a way to get rid of another monster, but forget that he's still Godzilla. Wait a second, what did Emmy say earlier? We made up the story about Godzilla. He never does destroy Japan. Oh yeah? Well, coulda fooled me, lady. Jeez, what are they gonna do? Do you think the King Ghidorah could help us? Do you think you could revive it? In the 23rd century? But if we bring him back, we'd still have Ghidra, which means we'd have to bring Godzilla back to defeat him, which means we'd have to bring Ghidra back again, 
which means they're still making more Terminator movies for some reason? How exactly does this work? So this brings us back to the beginning where they find Ghidra's body. Back in 1992, despite Godzilla's rampage, Shindo refuses to leave his post, believing that there's still some of the dinosaur that saved his life back in World War II left in Godzilla. Yeah, Godzilla may have saved your ass back in World War II, but he doesn't give a fuck about you now, old man. So they talked about bringing King Ghidra back, but how exactly are they gonna do that? By giving him a cybernetic upgrade, that's how. Hey, we've already had a Mecha Godzilla, so why not a Mecha King Ghidra? Alright, as much as I dislike the Dorad origin, I do gotta admit that this is a cool upgrade for Ghidra. Although considering Emmy's piloting it, maybe they should've just made a Megazord to fight Godzilla. Mecha King Ghidra does okay against Godzilla, although it's still not as effective as the original Super X. I don't know why everyone has such a hard time topping that. Uh-oh, looks like Emmy's in trouble. Get up and run, Emmy! Emmy, what's the matter? Hang on, I got an idea. You need to go to the future and get Mecha King Ghidra's remains and make Super Mecha King Ghidra, and that ought to be able to defeat Godzilla. Thankfully, Emmy has another weapon to use against Godzilla. Not sure why she didn't just use this first, but maybe the CGI wasn't ready. <laughs> I don't know why Godzilla seems upset. This looks like it'd actually be kind of fun. Oh, that does it. Nobody beats me in my own movie. Eat this! Emmy. It's okay, though. Emmy made it out safely. And she has some news for Terasawa. There's something I never got a chance to tell you. We're related. You're one of my distant ancestors from this wonderful age. Wow, that's gotta make him feel awkward. He was actually kind of attracted to Emmy. So Emmy returns home and it looks like both monsters are dead. Or are they? <laughs> Yeah, Ghidra may have the word in his name, but nobody fucks with the real King of the Monsters. As the producers hoped, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah was more successful than its predecessor at the box office, and as a result, the next couple movies in the series reused some of Godzilla's most popular foes and had a lighter, more fantasy-oriented tone. Now normally I consider that to be kind of a step backwards from Biolanti, but I actually enjoy this one. For those of you who thought the previous two Godzilla films took themselves too seriously for their own good, this one strikes a good balance. It's more colorful and pulpy than 1985 and Biolanti, but not as silly and juvenile as some of the 70s Godzilla films. Of course, like most movies involving time travel, the plot doesn't really hold up if you think about it too much. Or at all, really. But if you just roll with things, it's a fun monster flick. And even though the movie reuses one of Godzilla's most popular enemies, Mecha King Ghidra is a cool addition, and one I actually wouldn't mind seeing again. So if you're looking for a Godzilla movie that's fun but not too goofy, this is a good pick. So there you go, I did another Godzilla movie. So, are we cool? Well, that's all for now. Until next time. <laughs>